How's it going guys? It is 4.29 a.m. February 11th, Saturday here in Japan. We've got a past level question for biochemistry for step one. Although interestingly, nearly identical question shows up in one of the pediatrics forms for 2CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L and man underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to Telegram group and channel are down below. And I'll start the clip. 10-year-old boy, four episodes of vomiting over the past 24 hours during the past eight weeks. He's had increased urinary frequency and has been drinking large quantities of fluids. He's had a 10-pound weight loss during this time. Breath has a fruity odor. Question wants to know what's most likely to be seen in this patient. So as I prefaced with past level, we're handing you the diagnosis of DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, fruity odor, that's just the smell of ketones. So the reason he's got polyuria, uh, the urinary frequency, is because the high glucose concentration will be filtered. Glucose will be filtered across the uh, glomerulus and it's going to pull water with it. So you're going to lose water. Okay, you're urinating a lot, polyuria, drinking a lot to compensate. So let's just whip through the answers. Choice A, decreased carnitine shuttle activity, wrong fucking answer. Now a lot of nonsense biochemistry. Step one, of course, pass fail now. You could be aware that carnitine shuttle is required for breaking down fatty acids. So you're going to bring fatty acids from the cytosol into the mitochondrion. And then inside the mitochondrion, they're going to undergo beta oxidation where you're producing acetyl coas. That's and the acetyl coas will ultimately make their way into ketone bodies. Okay. So that's the process. That's what carnitine shuttle is used for. So if insulin is absent in DKA, we're not going to be building fatty acids. We're going to be breaking them down. So we'd have increased carnitine shuttle activity, if anything. Now, something else you can be aware of, a bunch of garbage, okay, is that carnitine deficiency, MCAD, LCAD, deficiency, medium, long chain, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase deficiencies can cause what's called hypoketotic hypoglycemia. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased beta hydroxybutyrate, wrong answer. So this is a ketone body. Clearly we have ketogenesis and DKA, so this would be increased. Now, the reason I made this an answer choice is because this isn't me trying to be creative. This specific ketone body shows up all over the NBME exams for step one. The, they'll give this in an arrow question, for instance, DKA, and then they'll have up and down arrows. And the answer, as part of the answer, they'll have an up arrow for beta hydroxybutyrate. And students are like, what's that? It's like, well, it's a ketone body, not my fucking opinion. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, hypokalemia, wrong answer. I'll be at tricky. Okay. Now in DKA, we're going to have what's referred to as hyperkalemia despite low total body potassium. So this just refers to the potassium level in the blood. So insulin normally functions to push potassium into cells. So we don't have insulin here. So potassium stays high in the blood. In addition, we have something called the cellular shift, where because we have ketogenesis, ketones are acidic, we're going to have increased protons within cells. Potassium will be higher outside cells to balance charge. Okay, so cellular shift and insulin can't do its job because it's not there. So potassium's high in the blood. That's hyperkalemia. But we have low total body potassium because that high potassium concentration, that potassium will make its way to the kidney. Kidney will sense that and it will micturate it out as per usual. Okay, nothing wrong with the kidney, but we're going to get increased caloresis. Okay, fancy word that just means micturation, urination of potassium. So we're going to get potassium wasting from the kidney. So it's high in the blood, but we're constantly losing it in the kidney. So low total body potassium. This is important. Okay, if you get an arrow question, you're going to select an up arrow for serum potassium. You're going to select a down arrow for total body potassium. Okay, wrong fucking answer. Choice D. Increased malonyl coa synthesis, wrong fucking answer. So, a bunch of fancy garbage. Okay, so malonyl coa uh, is created during fatty acid synthesis, and this in turn will actually inhibit the carnitine shuttle. It shuts off the carnitine shuttle. Okay, as I've already said innumerable times back in the day when we were all shooting for our 280 on the step one numerical, we used to memorize a bunch of garbage. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, increased tidal volume, correct answer. So DKA, high anion gut metabolic acidosis. So we have a low bicarbonate. It's part of mud piles, the D in mud piles, right? So we have a metabolic acidosis, and we're going to blow off our CO2 to compensate. CO2 is acidic. So we just have low bicarb, 
and we're going to have so bicarb normally 22 to 28. We expect a bicarb generally under 20. Bicarb can go super fucking low in DK, and normally CO2 is going to be 33 to 44. So we expect a CO2 under 33. So I'm not going to get into all of the nitpicky stuff with Winter's formula, etc. But what I can say is for arrow questions, you're going to select a in DKA, you're going to select a down arrow bicarb, down arrow pH, you're going to select a down arrow CO2. Of course, you're going to have compensation, but they're still going to have an acidosis. You're going to select an up arrow for anion gap, and you're going to select an up arrow for serum potassium, down arrow for total body potassium, down arrow for serum sodium. It's dilutional hyponatremia, high glucose in the blood, keeps water there, dilutes out the sodium. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content if you like my stuff. Subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.